Hello, Hello everybody. In this video, we will make an introduction of time domain analysis and we start analyzing simple first order systems. Okay, the idea in time domain analysis is very simple. We have a system, let's say G of S. Okay, G of S, we have input in time domain. If we take the Laplace transform, we have U of S. Okay, if we can compute the output in S domain, it is equal to Y of S. And if we take the inverse Laplace transform, we will obtain Y of T. Okay, so we know that y of s is simply equal to g of s times u of s and y of t is equal to inverse Laplace of g of s times u of s. Okay, so what's the basic idea? Basic idea is we have some sort of test inputs which are critical for feedback control systems. We will try to understand the output behavior with respect to different kind of inputs. And the second thing is we will keep the input fixed. And we will try to change the parameters of G and try to understand them. what change at the output uh, if I change the parameters of G. For example, if I change the stiffness, does it affect the stability, does it affect its convergence speed or other kind of steady state like behaviors. Okay, so this is the whole idea in time of analysis and it's a critical part for this course. Okay, so let's start with the most simple and basic uh, dynamical system, uh, the simplest one, which is a simple integrator. Okay, it's equal to 1 over s. Okay, so it's the simplest uh, system, the dynamical system, of course, and it is the fundamental block also for higher order systems. Okay, so we know that y of t under zero initial conditions is equal to 0 t u of tau t tau and y of s is simply equal to 1 over s times uh, u of s. Okay, so let's analyze this system a little bit and let's start with the most important and uh, simple input uh, for this class, which is the step input. Okay, step input looks like this. It's equal to 1 when t is uh, greater than 0 and it's equal to 0 when t is less than 0. Okay, it's the step input. If we draw the output, we know that it is equal to this. Okay, it's technically a ramp function because y of t is simply equal to t. u of s is equal to 1, it's a steam put, y of s is equal to 1 over s, and y of t is equal to t. Okay, that's nice. So, uh, and let's assume that it's a, a mechanical system. Uh, for example, if m is equal to 1, okay, if I apply a force, if I measure the velocity, uh, this system is technically a simple integrator. Okay, it means that if I apply constant force to the system, it will be constant acceleration. In terms of velocity, it will be an increasing velocity, uh, also similar to the position, uh, which also means that this system is unstable. For a constant input, the output is going to infinity. It is bounded input, bounded output, unstable, which we will talk about uh, later in the class. Okay, so it's a good system, it's a nice system, it's simple, but as you can see, the output behavior is not uh, very like uh, preferable uh, from control systems perspective. What we want is we want the systems to be stable. Okay, so uh, if this is a uh, like uh, force mass system, what we can want from the output is we want to uh, reach a, a constant speed as fast as possible and stay at the speed uh, unless we change the reference input. Okay, let's talk about this scenario. Okay, in that respect, what we can do is we can change the topology, okay, which will be erased, we will see that. Uh, instead of using this simple open loop structure, we will close the feedback with a controller, okay? So let's assume that this is our controller, okay? So let's use it. Okay, no, no, this is wrong, sorry for that. Okay, that's deleted, no problem. Okay, so this is my plant. Okay, that's great. I draw the output. Okay, now I have a feedback operation here. Okay, that's great. And this will go to here. That's great, okay, perfect. Now we have a feedback loop, as you can see. Okay, so. This is our system, it's the plant. This is our controller. And we will control this system with a simple proportional controller, okay? This is a negative feedback loop, this is R of S, and this is technically U of S, and this is 
E of S. So what's a proportion controller? It's very simple. I have reference input. Let's assume that it is a meter per second. This is reference speed, speed that I want my uh, mass uh, to reach. Okay, and this is not E, sorry for that. This is Y of S. This is Y of S. This is E of S. Okay, so I take the error between the reference and actual speed. Okay, and I multiply with the constant and I give my system. If my reference input is equal to reference output, which means that I'm at the desired speed, I don't need to do anything at all. Okay. But if my reference speed is higher than my actual speed, which means that if I have positive error, if I multiply with constant, it means that I will give a higher acceleration or higher force to my mass. If my error is uh, less than, my reference signal is less than my output, which means that my output speed is kind of overshoot, but it's faster than that I want. So the error is negative. I multiply with the constant, which means that I apply a deceleration effect to my uh, or negative force to my system. So as you can see in the basic idea, it works okay. But let's try to find the transfer function and its complete output to better understand if this closed loop system is good or bad. Okay, so if you compute the G of S is equal to K1 over S divided by, uh, okay, sorry for that, 1 plus k divided by s. If I simplify it, I will see that it is equal to k s plus k. Okay, that's great. So, uh, if you remember in the previous case, the reference input was a step input. Let's do the same thing. It's a step input. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, that's nice. Okay, it's equal to zero before. Okay, this is my input. So red is my reference input and it's equal to 1. Now let's compute the output. We know that out of t, the, the ref, uh, it's equal to 1 over s. So my y of s is equal to 1 over s multiplied with k over s plus k. I need to uh, apply partial fraction expansion, which is also very simple. And you should know this uh, very well from your uh, previous classes. Okay, so y of s is simply equal to... 1 over s minus 1 over s plus k. I think it should be correct. Yes, it's correct. That's great. Okay, so if I take the inverse Laplace, y of t is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus k t. Of course, t is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, that's right. So let's first analyze the categorical change when I change k. K can be, okay, let's change the color, greater than zero, okay. K can be less than zero, okay, that's also fine. K can be equal to zero, but when T is equal to zero, I need to change my partial fraction expansion computation, which will have a slightly different result than this. But let's analyze these two behaviors, okay. So when K is the, uh, larger than zero, it is equal to E to the power minus K, T and K is positive since I have negative, which means that this part will go to zero as t goes to infinity, okay? Which means that y of t will reach to one. That's great because it is where I want to go. One is my reference input. I want to reach one meter per second speed. Of course, I want to reach as fast as possible, but at least if I reach that, I will want to keep uh, at the speed uh, unless something changes about the system, about the input. Okay, that's good. So when k is uh, less than zero, it's negative. So I have e to the power like uh, minus kt, or it, it will be like e to the power 10t. It is a positive exponential, which means that it will go to infinity. Okay, so in this case, my system will be bipo unstable. It's not a desired behavior. I want that to be the system stable first. So this is a bad output. So I categorically reject for negative k values. I keep the positive k values, which is nice because it's a negative feedback loop. If I apply a negative k, it will be a positive feedback loop. And if you know this uh, from uh, other different applications, uh, positive feedback is bad for many cases. It technically makes the system unstable. Okay, that's great. So, okay. Now I know that my output is equal to one minus e to the power minus kt. 
for a specific k if i change the color let's change the color it will look like this okay so i reach uh, y is equal to one sd goes to infinity but if i want to reach faster what should i do okay that's also simple okay this is k okay so if i increase k okay it is e to the power minus kt this will increase so my decay rate will increase it will this part will reach the zero faster okay that's nice so it means that okay in this direction my k increases okay so let's change the color so in this direction my k is increases which means that i reach that state faster and faster this is what i want right i want to reach my desired speed as fast as possible if it's what you want if you don't have any limitations okay of course it's not practical what you should do is for this system the best controller is a proportion control with a high gain which is also true if your system is a simple integrator actually the optimal the best control is a proportion controller and if you don't have any limitation of k you should increase as much as possible if you have a limitation of course you should stop at safe limitation uh, if you don't care about the optimal aspect which is a different point but uh, this is the technically a good controller for this system okay now let's change everything not change everything keep the system is fixed okay that's great so let's change the input now let's analyze the same system with a respect different test input which is the ram function okay ram function is simply equal to t so if we draw it which looks like this as you can see it is a simply r of t is equal to t okay so in the ram function if it's my reference signal i want my output to follow a, a linearly uh, technically uh, increase its velocity with its velocity over time uh, with a constant acceleration this is the technical basic idea what i want from uh, this system so if you copy the output in s domain we will see that it will be equal to one of s square because the uh, trans uh, technically the laplace transform frame is equal to one over s square k divided by s plus k if i have my partial fraction expansion i have three components b s square plus c s plus k okay so if i compute a b and c if you look at the lecture notes i use the residue theorem i uh, obtain that it's equal to minus one over k divided by s plus one over s plus one over k i guess okay that's great divided by s plus k that's great so if i take the inverse laplace of this expression to compute y of t let's put one over s here it's equal to t okay that's great minus one over k plus one over k e to the power minus kt let's reorganize this y of t is equal to t okay plus minus or let's say minus okay that's great so minus one over k parenthesis one minus e to the power minus kt let's clean everything to get better idea what you want from this system okay so this is my output if i write my reference signal here r of t is equal to t i want y to be equal to r of t at all times as it is possible if it's not as best as possible so technically this part is the error between the reference signal and the output okay this is my error so if i draw this it will look like this okay if i draw my output it will be something like this okay as t goes to infinity let's analyze this okay let's clean that again so when t is equal to zero it's this is equal to zero this is one minus one is equal to zero it's equal to zero so it starts from zero okay and then because of t it will try uh, start to catch up with the reference signal and at some point uh, at t is goes to infinity it will show a behavior like this okay so why as you can see as t goes to infinity uh, this part will be constant 
Okay, I will show it uh, in a second. Okay, so as you can see, uh, different from the first order case, uh, this proportion control can never exactly catch the reference signal. Okay, uh, depending on the K, we can increase the speed. Uh, we can adjust the speed. I will show it uh, in a second. But the basic idea, it will never reach infinity. Okay, this part, and I will show you here in a second, is the steady state error. Okay, or let's say error. Let's compute the steady state error. What is error of t? Error is equal to r of t minus y of t. This is my error signal, and I want this error signal to be as small as possible. It is equal to 1 over k multiplied with minus uh, 1 minus e to the power minus k t. Okay, we know that this part is nice, right? Because as t goes to infinity, this will go to 0. Okay, that's great. No, it will not go to 0. Okay, as t goes to infinity, it will go to 1. So my steady state error will be equal to, okay, error steady state will be equal to 1 over k. So this part is equal to 1 over k. Okay, that's great. So uh, I cannot exactly cancel the error for this case, but at least I have a control on the error. It says that if you increase k, okay, if you increase k, it means that you can reduce the error, steady state error of the system. That's nice. So what happens to my convergence speed? Okay, so convergence speed is directly related with the exponential part of the system. And we know that e to power minus kt, and we want this part to go to zero as much as possible, of course. And it means that in order to increase the speed, I need to increase k. So. It may not be the optimal controller in terms of state state error because, as you can see, it can never cancel the state error for a constant k. But at least it's a good control such that by increasing k, we can reduce the state state error and we can also increase the convergence speed. Okay, so as you can see, proportion controller is a good controller for an integrator type system. Okay, uh, of course, uh, it is very good. Uh, if input is step input, if it's it's still good if input is a ramp input, and higher order inputs such as like quadratic functions or other kind of things are not also practical. So this is technically the the most that we want from a control system.